Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Are you sick of looking at Netflix and you don't know what to watch? So many movies out there, you don't know which ones are good, which ones were bad. You curious about what's out there? I'm Joey Powers. I'm Don Treller. This is The Best Pictures. The ones you don't want to miss. Hit it. Say hello to my little friend! Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Winners go home and prom queen. English, do you speak it? Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I don't deserve this. Deserves got nothing to do with it. No sequel for you. Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Best Pictures. I'm one of your hosts, Joey Powers. Hey, and I'm Don Trettler. Welcome to the show. Our first Zoom episode. Yeah, this is fun. This is fun. It's, it's new. It's going to be something we could do a lot more of in the future with everything going on. Um, so how's everything been going? Uh, things have been going all right. Get a little bored, right? Yeah, definitely. Definitely get a lot of cabin fever going on. Um, so we both thought this was a good idea to do a... Uh, I don't remember exactly what I called it, films we watched in isolation while isolated. Um, so I know that we both have probably, I think you said you have what, like 12? Yeah, about a dozen. Yeah. Maybe more than that now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, I have more than that too. Um, but this will be fun because, I mean, there's not really a lot to do right now. Right. You can't really go anywhere or do anything. I mean, what do you want to do, go hang out at the gas station? You know, <laughs> I mean, there's not a lot of options. Hey, we could go to Dairy Joy. Yeah. Hey, uh, that was funny. I was at someone's house the other night. They were like, you know, you should see the line at Dairy Joy. And someone's like, you know how to get everybody out of there real fast? Like, just go up and sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He's like, that's a pretty good idea, actually. Get right, on, get right up front, you know? It says on their website, you're supposed to take your ice cream and go. Yeah. You're not supposed to st stick, stick around and eat your ice cream. Parking lot or anything. But people are always there. Yeah, that's what everyone says. They're always crowded. I did want to mention that it was Jack Nicholson's 83rd birthday this past week. Well, happy happy birthday to Jack. Yeah, definitely happy birthday to Jack. And I was looking at his biography here, and, uh, or his filmography, I should say. How do you know? 2010 was his last movie. Wow. It seems like such a long time ago. It does. Oh, it's like, it seems like The Departed was almost more recent. You know, maybe it's because I've just seen The Departed so many more times than I've seen that movie. That's true. When was Departed? 2006. Oh. Yeah, so I, but doesn't it seem, have you seen How Do You Know? No. Don't. <laughs> it's not very good. It's got a good yeah. cast. It's kind of a love story. Uh, but what's your favorite Jack Nicholson movie or performance, either? Or both? I, you know, yeah, I would say Cuckoo's Nest. Cuckoo's Nest is the first thing that comes to mind when I think of him. Um, it's I tough. Right around the same time, Chinatown. Yeah. You know, I mean, and I, I think one of his best performances, too, is uh, Melvin Udall in As Good As It Gets and uh, Colonel Jessup in uh, A Few Good Men. Right. You know, so, I mean, he's definitely, and I haven't seen Easy Rider yet, but you have. How was he in that? Oh, he was good, but he played a minor role compared to the other two guys. Yeah, I'm probably with you, though. One Flew of the Cougars, and that's probably my favorite Nicholson movie in performance. Yeah. You know. Um, so I don't know. Do you want to go first? You want to talk about? Sure. I'm trying to think of what what maybe I should start with the most impressive uh, movie or the, or the one that I liked the best. I liked Nebraska. It was an Alexander Payne movie. Okay. Yep. Um, I, think, Booster. I think it got multiple nominations. Like Bruce Dern was nominated for Academy Award for it. Um, I just thought it was really good. Um, I really hadn't been super familiar with Alexander Payne, um, though I know he did a movie called The Descendants with George Clooney which, that I liked a lot. I was disappointed in that movie, to be honest with you. Which one? The Descendants. Oh, really? I, I just, I, I had a built up big, I think that's, you know how I am. Like I, I go into a movie after hearing how great reviewed it is and stuff like that. And it just, 
doesn't do it for me. He got great reviews. I mean, he was nominated. It was nominated for picture, director, actor, supporting actors. Oh, I th- I didn't know it was that that well regarded. I I, I kind of saw it and I was surprised. I was like, where did this movie come out of? It was it was a lot better than I expected. Yeah. But, um, a little bit deeper than I had expected. I thought it was going to be uh, more comical. And it yeah. wasn't. It was kind of like Nebraska was, where it was funny, but it wasn't uh, like comedy funny. It, right. was, it, it was funny in a very real sense, which yeah. I thought was really cool. Yeah, so like, I, and, and I liked both really of those really movies. Least. Yeah, so that was one. It, it's shot in black and white, if you haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Which I thought was an interesting choice. You know. Um, because the main character is, is older. Right. And he's going back, he goes back to his hometown, which is kind of like memories and stuff. So I thought shooting in black and white was kind of a cool choice. And it really differentiates it a lot from other movies that have come out because we don't see a lot of black and white movies anymore. I mean, yeah. I don't know how many you can think of that they've done. Um, what's the one that was like a comic book? Um, Sin City. Yeah, yeah, Sin City. Um, I'm thinking Woody Allen's Manhattan, he did in black and white. Natural Born Killers had splashes of black and white, not a lot. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, there's definitely not many. The Elephant Man. What's that? The Elephant Man was done in black and white. So it kind of brings you back. It it has a certain feel to it to have a black and white film. I think Frank Miller did another one called The Spirit. I think that was in black and white. Oh. I haven't seen it, but I'm pretty sure that was black and white, kind of, kind of, trying to be kind of similar to Sin City, I guess. Comic book. Type I'm gonna movie. write it down. The Spirit. Um, one that I, I watched that I thought was appropriate, given our times right now, was Prisoners. <laughs> now that's that's the one with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, right? Hugh Jackman, yeah. Hugh Jackman, yeah. I like that a lot. I just thought the title was appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm giving everything right now. You know, I mean, but that's, you, you did like that, yeah. I did, yeah. Yeah, that was a really, really good movie. Um, and it's one that I'd probably seen, I don't know, the last three months prior. But it's just one of those things where it's like, you're just going, I have so many DVDs, I'm just going through them all. Finally, it's like, just pick one. Just put it in the DVD player. You know, because I'm like doing housework, or whatever, but a movie like that, you, you stop doing housework and sit down and watch it because it's that good of a movie. You don't, you, even though I've seen it for like 10 times. Right. You know, it's just, it's such an interesting movie. You know, it's a really interesting plot. It's got very deep uh, characters. You know, like Jay Gyllenhaal's a little out there. Yeah, and just Way trying out. to figure out whether the uh, the main suspect, the person that you that they think did it, is the person who actually did it. Yeah. And you kind of go back and forth, you know, as you would in a lot of these uh, cases like that. Oh, yeah. Especially when you're talking about young daughters like that. Right. You know, just go missing. I mean, I mean, I'm not a parent, but if I was, I, I can't only imagine what he's going through, you know? Yeah. So that was a real good one. That was well, speak, speaking of Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal. Let's see. I want to get it so it's not shining on there. I haven't seen that. I watched this movie rendition. But when I see you in person, I'll lend it to you. Um, this was a good, this was an interesting movie. Um, well, I'm getting attacked by a beast here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Oh, what's her name? Reese Witherspoon is in it, plays his wife, not his wife, um, but the wife of the person who's captured. And um, Meryl Streep has a pretty significant role in this. Um, it was pretty good. I just had questions about it where they made a decision as far as timeline goes and, you know, like flashbacks and stuff. Mm-hmm. And there's a major part of the film that they kind of they kind of took I'm trying to think of how to explain it. It's 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 out of sync, and I didn't understand why they made that choice. Um, otherwise, it's a really good, even powerful film, you know. Who directed that? Let's see. I want to say there's someone famous, wasn't it? No, I don't see it on the front. And I can't read the back yet. That's fine. I can look it up right here. Yeah. I just I remember that was pretty well praised when it came out. I don't remember why I never ended up seeing it. It has to do with it's a um, it's a guy. I think he's like an Egyptian national, and he's married to an American woman. He made and he went to school in the United States, and 
he's on a business trip to South Africa and coming back, he's taken off the plane by, I want to say like FBI, CIA, that they suspected him of a, a connection to a terrorist. And that's where the story takes off is that, you know, what happens to this guy? And Jake Gyllenhaal works for the CIA and gets thrown into a position where he has to make some decisions about the whole process. It's really interesting. Yeah, that's, uh, that sounds like my kind of movie. Uh, I don't know, kind of sounds a little, did you ever see, uh, what's it called? No. The Bridge of Spies with Russell, uh, Russell Crowe and Leonardo DiCaprio? Or is that? I think that's, uh, Bridge of Spies is Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks, okay, there's another one, something like that. Russell Crowe. Body of Lies, maybe. I can't picture that one. Russell Ridley, Russell Crowe and Ridley Scott directed. Oh. Russell Crowe plays uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's like uh, mentor. They're CIA agents. Oh, uh, it sounds kind of sounds kind of like that to me a little. A I little. gotta see that. It's yeah, it's pretty good. It's called Body of Lies. You should check it out. It came out in like 2009, 2010, maybe. All right. Um, another one that I just watched recently uh, was Out of Sight. I don't George know, did we talk about that recently? Um, I don't think we've talked about it in a while. George Clooney, Jennifer Lopez, Steven Soderbergh directed it. Yeah. His first like really like decent sized budget movie. I mean, he did uh, Sex, Lies, and Videotape, which was pretty popular, but it wasn't a big budget. And he actually got a pretty big cast, like Don Cheadle's in it, uh, Bing Rains, Albert Brooks. You know, it's got a really good cast. Yeah, I think you lent it to me. I like that. Yeah, Clooney and Bing Rames are like uh, bank robbing partners or just thieves in general. And they, they break out of prison and uh, Jennifer Lopez is like the U.S. Marshal on their trail. Him and her kind of have like a love connection and stuff. You know, Don, Don, Don Cheadle's actually really great. In, he's, his character's kind of scary because he's really, really messed up in the head. You know, um, but I, just a good combination. I thought Clooney and Jennifer Lopez had really good chemistry in it. Um, and I thought George Clooney and Bing Rames also had very good chemistry as the two criminal partners, you know. <clears throat> um, but yeah, Soderbergh, after that, kind of got like a chemistry with Clooney where they did all the Ocean's 11, 12, 13 movies together. Right. Um, you know, so they, they kind of, they all kind of seem like a group of them all kind of work together. Like Don Cheadle's in all the Ocean's 13, all, all the Ocean's 11 movies, Matt Damon's in all those movies, and him in you know, it just seems like they have like a clique of people trying to make like their own like modern day version of the Brat Pack, you know? So, I don't know. What but it was, the last, what was the last movie by Steven Soderbergh? He made something interesting recently. That's not coming to mind, huh? It's not, to be honest with you. I can look it up though if you want to talk about another one of your movies. All right. Well, you know what? I should probably go with some of the better ones. Um, another one that I saw was 20 Years a Slave, which won the Academy Award for Best Picture. And I know that you had said in the past, when I told you that I owned it and I hadn't seen it, you said, um, Michael Fassbender. He goes, oh, Michael Fassbender is just evil in that movie. He is. So I was, uh, and I was a little reluctant. I'm like, well, it could be too heavy duty, like, um, like watching Schindler's List or something. You gotta be in the right mood to watch those types of movies. And I finally decided I would watch it. And it was, it was a very good movie. Very, really well done. Uh, I, thought, I thought he was great in it. I just, I just couldn't get over the one scene at the beginning. Uh, I'm not really seeing anything. I mean, The Laundromat, High Flying Bird. Oh, right, I did, you know what? I didn't put that on my list, but I did. I saw The Laundromat too. Is that the it's one? Meryl Streep. And she's uh. Uh, she's married to a guy who gets killed in a in a boating accident and uh, on a commercial boat. It was like a ferry in one of the, I want to say it's like Lake Placid or something like that. Well, anyway, what happens is the, uh, the boat companies insure, it, they're insured and it turns out that it's a, it's a scam that their, uh, their insurance company, their insurance coverage was a total, um, scam and Meryl Streep her character is trying to research this and trying to find out who's at the end of the line with this whole thing and what it turns out is it was money laundering 
So whoever had bought, it was a company that bought a, that bought a company that bought a company and nobody was responsible at the end of it. And it turned out that the boat wasn't insured. Wow. Yeah. That actually sounds like a good movie. It was, it was pretty good. I think it was a Netflix movie. I like, uh, I like Stoderbergh movies a lot. Um, what about uh, Inception? Inception, you watch that again? Yeah. Why, did I just talk about that? No, no, but I've, I, I, I know you've seen it before because we've talked about Inception. Yeah. I don't know. It was just one of those ones. I was just going through it and I was like, you know what? I want to watch it and see if I can follow it like I did the first time. Because I was surprised because it can be confusing. What'd you think on, on another viewing? How'd you feel about it? I, I still liked it. I, I mean, a stellar cast. You know, I mean, top to bottom. I mean, that cast, I mean, Leonardo DiCaprio, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, uh, Tom, pretty much what made Tom Hardy famous in the States. Right. I mean, Marianne Cotillard, Michael Caine. Uh, I forget the uh, guy from uh, The Last Samurai. I can't think of his name right now. But he's oh. great, too. Yeah. Um, just a, a really good cast. Tom Berenger's in it. You know, when he, this is when he started making his, like, comeback. You know, it's like the last time I saw him, he was playing in Major League, and now he looks like he's 70. Yeah. Probably is. <laughs> well, that's a movie I could watch again. Um, probably need to watch again, and I, just to see if I pick up some stuff. Because that has one of those endings where you say, well, you know, yeah. is, it, is it this or is it that, you know? Yeah. So uh, that's kind of cool. I like, I like Christopher Nolan. I think he's a great director. Oh, yeah. Um, I actually, well, I, I'm on the subject. I didn't watch the Batman Begins because I wasn't as big of that as I was, but I watched The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Ride. Just because, like I said, I'm, an, I'm a big Nolan fan, you know, and he really doesn't seem to go wrong with anything he really does. No. You know, so. And that's pretty amazing. If you think about it, for a lot of directors to have a string of movies where they make some really quality movies back to back to back. Um, another person like that or, or people are the Cone Brothers. Uh, mm -hmm. Cone Brothers are usually consistently good. I mean, they did have that one movie with Tom Hanks, the, um, the Lady Killers that we didn't like. That was terrible. But boy, the bad movies compared to the good ones. I mean, the good ones far, far outnumber. I got, and one that I got to see from them was um, uh, Llewellyn Davis. I can't think what it's called. Um, Finding Llewellyn, Llewellyn Davis? What's the name? Inside Llewellyn Davis? Inside Llewellyn Davis, yeah, that's what it was. Which I thought was really interesting. Not one of my favorite ones from them, uh, but that's one I bought cheap when, when one of the video stores was going out of business. Mm -hmm. So I got to see that, that was good. You know, another one like that is Fincher. Fincher, too. He doesn't do a lot, but what he does, I mean, they're pretty on point. Right. You know, I was just looking at a director the other day, and now I cannot think of who it was, but he's only done like nine or ten movies, but they're all like seven and a half or better on IMDb. Yeah. Every single one of them, and I can't think of who it was. I was just looking at it the other day. I think it was yesterday, actually. And I can't think of it. I wish I'd written it down. I mean, that's quite a feat to, to, to pull off. even. You know, you mentioned Ridley Scott before, and Ridley Scott has a couple of dogs in there. Um, relatively recently, I watched Robin Hood with Russell Crowe, mm -hmm. um, and it was just, uh, it was different than the Robin Hood story that we're used to, where Robin, you know, steals from the rich and gives to the poor. This was almost like a backstory to lead up to how he became, you know, Robin Hood. He's actually, I think they call him Robin of the Hood. And, it's not even really his name in the movie. So it was kind of, it was kind of weird, but it really was not a good film. And there, Ridley Scott's made a couple of dogs that have kind of like fallen by the wayside. Well, I, I can't really picture Russell Crowe as Robin Hood either. Though. Like, oh, he's, I mean, and he's good. It was no knock on Russell Crowe or, um, I'm trying to think who the female lead was. They were good. It really was just, the story, it was just like, you know, when you're thinking about Robin Hood, you're thinking about, um, and I haven't seen the Kevin Costner one, but I'm sure it had that kind of light you know, feel to it. And this was more action. This is people getting their heads cut off. And, you know, it was, it, yeah, it Prince just- of, Prince of Thieves wasn't that violent, but it was, 
It was a good movie. I mean, yeah, it was, it was light at times, but it definitely was a serious movie. Yeah. But it was, it was a good movie. It's definitely a really good movie. Um, speaking of Ridley Scott, though, another one that I just saw was his brother directed Crimson Tide. Oh, you know, nice. That's, that's a good one. That is good. I haven't seen that in a long time. Yeah, Denzel Washington and Gene Hackman, two, two of the best actors of their generation. You know? Um, right. And Viggo Mortensen's in it before he really became famous. Um, really good movie, Mutiny on a Submarine, United States Submarine, as they could possibly be headed to a nuclear war with Russia. You know, so, so it's definitely a serious movie. But it's really, it's a suspenseful movie. It's action-packed. I mean, it, it, it goes by fast. You know, no question. I mean, it's a very good movie. Um, anyone that hasn't seen it, I would 100% recommend it. I mean, it's older, early 90s. Um, but one of, one of Tony Scott's better films, I mean, he had a, a string of good ones with like Beverly Hills Cop, uh, um, Top Gun. This was right around the same time, a few years later, you know. So he had like a eight to 10 year period where he was one of the hottest directors in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Uh, True Romance he directed, which was right around the time of Crimson Tide. Yeah. Um, I watched this movie. I, I don't even know if I had heard of it. I was looking to see if it was on my list and I didn't find it. It's called um, The Immigrant. Oh, it Joaquin was, Phoenix. Yeah, Joaquin Phoenix, uh, yeah, Marion Cotillard, and Jeremy Renner. Yeah, I haven't seen that. And when I saw those three names, I said, well, geez, I'll give this a shot just yeah. based on the actors alone. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was pretty, that was a pretty good movie. That was real, real good. Uh, Turn of the Century, Marion Cotillard, she's the immigrant, and she's got a sister who turns out to be sick as they're going through Ellis Island. So they can't let the sister in. So it was kind of an in interesting, and you know, Marianne Cotillard's character has to. Uh, I, I know, I know it's about. <laughs> try to get her out. Yeah, Jeremy Renner's the bad guy, right? No, he's not really a bad guy. No, I don't he's know not. How to explain it. Yeah. And even Joaquin Phoenix, well, I guess to a certain degree, what makes it wonderful is they're, that they're whole characters. Nobody's really super good, you know? Or super uh, bad, like they're just... super bad. I mean, they're, they're just human beings, you know? So I know I recommend that one. That's a good one. All right, so we got time for one more. Do you wanna talk about Have one you of you seen this movie? This is another one. I found some movies I'd never heard of before called The Family. Robert it's De Niro? Robert De Niro. Yeah, Michelle and, Pfeiffer. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. I have heard of it, I haven't seen it. And they're in a wit witness protection program overseas in Europe. And they're being hunted. And uh, it's, got, it's got kind of a little bit of a comical edge to That's it. That's what I thought. That's it, what I heard. Enough so that when, there's, when a couple of characters get killed, it takes you by surprise a little bit because kind of the mood of the movie was not, not that dark that you would expect somebody to get killed like that. Uh, that was another good one, too. It's kind of surprised me, these movies that kind of got by me and I had never heard of them. But you obviously, you've heard of a couple of these that I hadn't. You know, there's one more real quick that I wanted to mention to you. I haven't watched it recently, but it's called The Killing Season with Robert De Niro and John Travolta. Oh, good. That... Is it worth seeing? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just funny because two like A-list celebrities, you know, you know, big household names. John Travolta plays like a, I forget what country he's from, it's like somewhere in the Middle East. And he's hunting Robert De Niro in the woods, like out in Oregon. He's like, De Niro's like a retired like Marine or something like that. And it's pretty much just the, the two of them and De Niro's the son, and that's it throughout the whole movie. It just takes place in the woods. Just really, I don't know, I just thought of it when you mentioned De Niro, because he, he tried to make a comeback and nothing really seemed to be working all that well. It's, it's not, worth, not worth seeing. I mean, if you're really that hard up. Well, it but sounds like the kind of movie that if you don't like it, I'm not going to like it. You're not going to like it, yeah. <laughs> but that's you know what? I'm thinking about this as we're winding down. Um, I still have a bunch of stuff here on my list. Um, some, other, some other movies, and I'm not going to say anything about this, but um, did, did you see this movie? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that's another one we could talk about. I'd, I I started to find some more after I made the list. Did you watch it already? I did. Okay, yeah, no, I would definitely talk about that. That's different. Well, good deal. Maybe we could try this again next Monday. Yeah, 
yeah, that sounds good to me. If they're if they're up for it, I, I'm I'm up for it. It's kind of fun, you know. It's different, but it takes some getting used to. But we'll work it out. I'm kind of serious how the outro is going to go here. But yeah. um, this has been the best pictures this week. I'm one of your hosts, Joey Powers. I'm Don Trettler, and these are the ones you don't want to miss. <laughs> You can't fight in here. This is the war room. Here's Johnny. Go ahead.